that they need in the locker room to improve, to get better. Uh, everything that they need is in the locker room to improve and get better. Well, what is in that locker room? When you look at when, Skip, when you look at that roster, they might not have a guy on the offense that can go start for anywhere else in the league. Defensively, you might have two guys. That's Devin McCourty and that's Stephon Gilmore. So of 22 starters, you might have two guys that can go somewhere else and start. And then I'm supposed to believe all of a sudden, Skip, at the end of the day, having played this game for 14 years, talking about we need to play better and yada, 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 that don't do anything. At the end of the day, you got to play better. And Cam has not played but well. Now, and, and when you throw zero touchdowns and you got five interceptions and your defense is not 85 Bears, 2,000 Ravens, Ravens, 02 Bucks, Skip, you go, you're going to lose. You, you're going to lose those games because your offense is already putting your defense on a short field and your defense isn't lights out like they were the first half of last year when they were giving up fewer than eight points a game. So I expect them to struggle again. Now, could, could Coach Belichick dial up something, confuse jo uh, Josh Allen, because Josh Allen has come somewhat back down to earth. He's still playing well, but not like he was in the first four weeks of the season. But, Skip, I, I, I just don't see it, Skip. When I look at when I look at this roster and I look at this team, I'm like, how in the hell are they gonna get better with what they have that's in that locker room? I mean, you can hear, well, he might trade for this guy, he might trade for that guy. They're more than one player away on offense or defense to get them to where they need to be or where they want to be. So I I believe they will struggle again in Buffalo. Unfortunately, so do I. <laughs> Shannon, I'm feeling sorrier and sorrier for Cam <laughs> Newton. He's in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I, I look at what he's left with at receiver at Buffalo against your, your, your arch rival within the division, the team I thought would win the division, a game that now Cam calls must win as they fall, have fallen to two and four. And do you realize his three receivers – still healthy, who are going to be in the starting lineup, I guess, are Jacoby Myers, undrafted out of North Carolina State, Demir Bird, who they picked up from Arizona, undrafted out of South Carolina, and Gunnar Oshevsky. I'm pretty sure Gunnar's going to have to play high plays in this game as the third <laughs> receiver, who was undrafted out of Bemidji State, which is a D2 school up in Minnesota. Yeah. Gunner. That's, that's what you're working with, three undrafted receivers because Julian Edelman, broken down, beat up. Now he's got to have some kind of scope on his knee. I, he, he led the league in drops last year. He was Brady's best friend and worst nightmare all last year. And trust me, down in Tampa right now, Tom is shaking his head and having empathy for Cam because nobody knows better how bad it's gotten in New England, how bare the cupboard is, than Tom Brady, this is, this is embarrassing. <laughs> and, and yet Cam gives great press conference. He took that one over yesterday. I loved everything he said. It's highly entertaining because he has huge personality. But his quote about uh, when he was asked about losing, you know, losing is not acceptable in this locker room, in this county, in this state, in this area, in this region. So Cameron Newton, you need to pick your expletive up. That's what I've learned, okay? I loved it. It was a great quote. Everything, he said, he said he got humbled by being tapped on the shoulder by Belichick and replaced in the fourth quarter by Jarrett Stidham. And yet, he says, I, I try to, to stay positive and speak it into existence. I, I don't think you can speak this one into existence because, Shannon, look, look at the tight ends. Look, look what Brady's doing <laughs> with Gronk in Tampa. All of a sudden, Gronk's mm -hmm. come back to goat life. Mm -hmm. And now look at what Gronk's done. He's caught 22 balls for 280 yards and two touchdowns. All of the Patriot tight ends combined have caught eight balls for 88 yards and no touchdowns. And Belichick went out in the third round in this past draft and drafted two tight ends, <laughs> one of them uh, a rookie named Dalton Keene from Virginia Tech, who finally got in a game last week. That was his first game, and he did catch the one ball that was thrown to him. That's it. That's all your production. They have the worst tight end production as they did last year, 
in the whole league. That they've caught a grand total of 13 passes as tight ends. How can you win with that? It, it, Belichick can't. has let this go from bad to worst. Mm -hmm. And the guy who's paying for it is Cam. And, and Shannon, mm -hmm. isn't this a microcosm of Cam's career? Because remember those first two games he played as a pro? Coming out of Auburn, national champ, Heisman winner. Mm -hmm. Even won a high, I mean, a championship at Blinn Junior College in Texas. And here he comes into pro football, and I thought he was going to take the world over. He throws for 422 at Arizona in his first pro game, and then came home to score, to throw for 432 against Aaron Rodgers at, in Charlotte, obviously, for Carolina. And after that, he never sniffed a 400 yard game since. And he's had very few 300 yard games. And how did he start off in New England this year? Well, the first game against Miami, he took it over mostly with his legs because he ran 15 times for 75 yards and two touchdowns. And then he goes to Seattle and throws for almost 400 yards, 397, and ran 11 times for 47 more, two touchdowns. And as you know, it went down to the last play, and if he just bounced it outside, they would have pulled off the big upset on a Sunday night at Seattle. Correct. Okay? And that was it. And then the last three games, Cam is one touchdown to six interceptions. So it sort of mirrored his career a little bit that his QBR of the last three has been 15, an average of 15, which is scale zero to 100, woeful. It's horrible. Yeah, and it's the worst in all of pro football over the last three games. Well, am I condemning Cam for that? I'm not. Y you can only do so much with what you have to work with and He's, it's like he's playing with both hands tied behind his back in New England as Brady felt like he was much of last year. So, Even, Skip. Go ahead. He, he, your brother's a chef. Yeah. Even the best chef need the proper ingredients to make a nice meal. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he can make us whip, whip up something, but sooner or later you're like, you know what? I just don't have what it takes. And then Cam looks back, and he sees what he left in, 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 in Carolina. He sees Samuel. He sees DJ Moore. They got Mike Davis. Yeah. Christian McCaffrey is coming back. He's like, man. Agreed. I, look, look what I had, and look what I have. Yep, I agree. And, and Skip, like I said, I don't see how, looking at this roster, and I know what Cam said. Cam says, we have everything we need in the locker room. To do what? To win no more games? And by the way, speaking of my brother, I just wish this pandemic would start <laughs> to subside so he could reopen all his restaurants full force because this is rough on restaurant tours right now, as well, you know. Well, especially, Skip, in Chicago because you can't be outside. No. <laughs> you, no. you can't be outside now. Outside I mean, at is least ended. In, yep. Yeah. At least in California and Florida and some of the warm weather states, you could open up have patios. A little ain't no bit. Patio go, ain't no patio going on in Chicago. No. Chicago's summer, and I lived there for a while. It lasts about two and a half months, so summer.